What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, Zechariah chapter 5 to chapter 6, verse 8. I want to give you some Bible tips in regards to this contextual chapter so you can better understand what God is trying to tell you and the lessons that he's trying to teach you and for the Bible to come to life. So I want to give you some um, information regarding this. So if it's helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you like it. And if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below so I could answer them for you. The title of this message is actually is called um, The Strong Warning of God that God gives both his people and unbelievers of this world. This is covered in this chapter. Let me give you a breakdown of what to expect in this chapter and what we have been talking about. Zechariah's next three visions differ somewhat from the first five. Their message shift focus, a focus from encouragement to a strong warning. Notice this. However, that the warnings themselves provide hope and assurance to those who believe and obey the Lord, those who will inherit God's promises. Remember that the prophet's very first message was to repent. Repentance was necessary for the people to receive the great promises and blessings of God. It prepared them to hear the promise soberly with due care. Only after the call of repentance did Zechariah share the great hope given in visions one through three, the hope of God's watchful care, the hope of the triumph over all enemies, and also the hope of God's glory on earth and the restoration of Jerusalem. Following these hopes, the Lord gave his people two great assurances. These were given in a vision four and five, the assurance of being cleansed and the assurance of being equipped for life and service. But finally, finally vision, visions six through eight, Zechariah issues a strong warning to God's people, though. However, the messages were intended for all unbelieving nations and people of the world as well. These warnings remind us that not everyone will inherit the promise of God. In fact, some will reject the Lord and his wonderful promises. The Lord therefore warns his people, only the obedient will inherit the promised land. This is a symbol of heaven and the coming kingdom of God. <clears throat> to prepare for this coming kingdom, the Lord was going to perform a dramatic act of cleansing. God had already promised to cleanse his people and their leaders from their sins. He now promises to cleanse the entire land of sin and wickedness. But notice this. However, that wickedness cannot be removed from the land without removing the wicked. Otherwise, the warning will be have no sense. Thus, the heart of the message its true force speaks to the rebellious and unrepentant. It warns those who dare to persist in sin and rebellion. It puts everyone on notice that who might reject the great promise of God, the salvation he offers. The substance of this warning is that the unbelieving and rebellious will not inherit God's promises. This is the subject of this sobering message of this. This is this chap this contextual chapter is broken down into three parts. The first part is God will banish the lawless from the promised land, a symbol of heaven. This is vision number six. You'll see in vision number six, they're talking about a flying scroll. This is covered in chapter five, verses one to four. So look out for that. Second, God will remove wickedness itself from the promised land. This is covered in vision number seven. And what you'll see is the woman in the basket. This is covered in chapter five, verses five to 11. And third, God will judge the nations. This is covered in ver um, vision number eight. You'll see the four chariots on patrol covered in chapter six, verses one to eight. If this was helpful, helpful, make sure you add this to your favorites and make sure you hit the thumbs up button. And if you got some interesting things out of it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Also, you know to put in the comments below, amen, and I'll send you a personal message. Also, make sure that you add it to your favorites so you can create your own database and make sure you copy them down. Make sure you look at it. If you want to see an in-depth interpretation, study, of this chapter, go over to my YouTube channel, type in my name, which is there on the screen somewhere, and 
um, go to the type in my name at the screen somewhere and you can look at, you can go to the live section and actually go through the process of interpreting this scripture, breaking it all the way down, going in depth with it. And then we have some thoughts of what you should, what we, what we learned from it all. So I want to thank you for watching. God bless you. God bless your family. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.